Facebook, Apple, Amazon and Google are the four most influential tech giants in the world. But do they hold too much power and should they be broken up? In this video I'll answer those questions. Hi guys, I'm Eni, aka The Not Trader, a friendly neighborhood swing trader, back again with another video. Remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that alert button to get alerts on all my latest videos. I've got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at The Not Trader on all social media platforms. And if you check the description section below, you'll see a link to my mailing list and my Discord chat room called Pip Talk. Now, um, I was listening to a great podcast today, and it was really interesting. It was uh, the... Um, I'll talk about the podcast at the end actually, but so just wait to the end of this video if you want to hear the name of the podcast. But um, it was a very interesting podcast and they were just talking about um, Facebook, Apple, Amazon and Google and um, whether they're, they're too big now and they have too much influence. And it was a really interesting take on why the argument as to why they should be broken up. So the question I'm posing in this uh, video is, are, are these four companies breaching antitrust laws? Well. Before we get into are they breaching antitrust laws, we have to kind of go into what are antitrust laws because it's a quite vague um, term. Well, uh, I've got the definition here. So antitrust laws are, well, let me read it out. Antitrust laws referred to as competitive laws are statutes developed by the US government to protect consumers from predatory business practices. They ensure that fair competition exists in an open market economy. So. The definition of antitrust laws was actually meant when they were created it was a time when um they were trying to refer to stuff like um monopolies occurring so if one company had like dominance of the whole market share then they could dictate prices and that wouldn't be fair to consumers because they could charge inflated prices for their product and consumers wouldn't have an alternative so they would have to pay for these pay these prices and that won't be great for the consumer it won't be great for a free market so antitrust laws were put in place to combat monopolies and oligopolies um, but as the markets progress there's there's more things that kind of fall under under this antitrust law um, umbrella so how do these four actually breach antitrust laws so first of all there's a the social cost so when I say social cost I'll give example um, for example Facebook uh, they have they on Instagram and Instagram is, is a cesspool for uh, insecurities especially for the younger generation they fit they use the algorithm to feed people more of what they want to see but some sometimes these things can be detrimental to the person's mental health for example young girls are seeing women with bodies that they can't obtain and then they start feeling uh, depressed or suicidal and then you have young young boys or girls seeing um, the lifestyle lifestyle the people that they can't achieve and then they compare it to their own lives and then they start getting depressed and um, Instagram and Facebook, they're all about keeping people on the platform for as long as possible. So they'll keep feeding you what you want to see, even if it's detrimental to your mental health. Then you have stuff like um, uh, the elections. Like we all know about what happened with um, Cambridge Analytica using uh, Facebook data to um, skew elections in different countries. And you even have stuff like what Amazon are doing, which is leveraging their, their labor force to get tax breaks. So uh, if you don't know about this, Amazon were going to set up a new um, uh, building and they were, they, were, they were going back and forth between different states. I think they were going to choose between Washington DC or New York. And what they were doing was trying to play them off each other by getting tax breaks because all of the mayors of these kind of cities all want Amazon to put their base there so they can create jobs, so they can stay in office. So Amazon plays on this and they will... They will make each each of these different cities bid for like their business and buy and the way they bid for it isn't through money but through basically tax breaks and this is really detrimental to 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 the country well to usa because amazon are a big company and they're not really paying the tax that they should be so these are some of the social issues that come under antitrust laws and so antitrust needs to be looked at from a different perspective it's not just going to be about um competition and oligopolies and uh and companies uh, colluding you have to look at a more nuanced way of looking at antitrust because social costs sometimes can even be worse than um, price rises from a monopoly and then you have stifling innovation so a lot of the things that that we find about these big fours in particular is that 
um, there's a lot of inf innovation that's been stifled by companies that try to compete with these the with Facebook Google Amazon and, and uh, Apple because what happens is that if there's a small agile startup that has a really niche technology and they're doing pretty well and they let's say they are um, they could potentially be competing with Google for example Google will do one or two things they will either buy up the company before they reach their full potential and they'll charge an overinflated price and the, the founders of these companies will be like yep that's that's our payday we're out and then they'll and second thing they'll do is that they'll um, make them sign a non-compete clause so that means that these founders that started this company they can't just leave and then recreate the same company again under a new name they can they have to just leave the industry altogether so what this does is that if Google buys this company they either swallow it up into the the, the the their their company their alphabet company and then it just gets lost amongst all of uh, all the other businesses that they own and it doesn't really see the light of day it doesn't really see the innovation that it was seeing when it was a startup or it succeeds and then maybe it does see the innovation but a lot of times what happens is that these 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 small companies that get bought up by one of these big four they will either just get lost and fall by the wayside once they get bought up or um and, and the staff that, that started this company can't create a new company, so that innovation is lost. So when I was listening to this podcast, the guest actually suggested some ways in which um, if the antitrust laws were actually implemented, these companies could get split up. So Google could get split up into um, YouTube, Google Ads, and then obviously out Google. Facebook could split out Instagram as its own business. Amazon could split out AWS, which is a really lucrative part of their business, which is their uh, cloud web storage uh, business. But Apple, it was really hard to kind of uh, say how they could split their company up because Apple have kind of repositioned themselves as a service-based company and their um, biggest IP is their brand. So who would actually control the brand if they split the company up? based on different product offerings. So that would be a pretty hard one to really decide as to how to split up. So the podcast that I was listening to was the Business Casual Podcast by Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a um, really good newsletter or email uh, newsletter that I subscribe to. They're pretty good. I like, I like some of the um, articles that they send and the way that their writing style is quite um, fun and like not too serious, even though it still provides business information. And they were interviewing a guy called Scott Galloway. Now I've never heard of him before, but I really like him. He's quite—I like his really no-nonsense um, way of uh, uh, discussing topics, and he's very just—I like—I like his sarcasm. It's quite funny. And uh, he's an author and a professor, and he's wrote a book called um, *The Big Four, which is about this topic that I've just kind of covered. And in this interview, he was really kind of covering all the topics I just kind of mentioned in broad strokes. But I'd suggest you check this interview out. It's really interesting. And I think this is the first podcast that they've released. So I've subscribed to them and I'm going to be listening to more of the podcasts going forward. But yeah, I'll put the link to the podcast in the description section below. Any AKA the Not Trader sign in.